myself, five minutes of questioning. Assistant Secretary Fee, um, the Manomo Cotolo mine in the DRC is one of the largest, if not the largest, in the world. President Biden's climate change agenda is, is pretty aggressive by, uh, by all measures. The automotive industry has been tagged with the obligation to meet these greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, targets, lest they, uh, they pay fees, according to NHTSA last year, um, could cost the industry uh, $90 billion and uh, another $9 billion uh, in, in fees for noncompliance. And that's not to mention any other penalties that could come from any other uh, agencies, the administration. Uh, given these aggressive goals, um, I imagine that you support the President's climate agenda. Um, are, is your department also given, given metrics? And are you also tracking the fact that uh, President uh, Shisekedi was uh, in Beijing negotiating the sale and the control of one of the largest lithium mines in the world, as it's nearly impossible to currently make electric vehicles without lithium this past uh, weeks in, in Beijing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, I welcome your interest in the DRC and in the role that DRC critical minerals will play uh, for the United States and, and globally. Uh, we are working with his government uh, to see what might be possible in terms Are you being measured by anything? Are, we say that there is transformational change. We say that there are meetings. We say that there are, 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 you, are there any goals that you have to hit? Are, are there any metrics that you are, are, are measuring to, uh, to uh, kind, of, kind of define and, and be transparent with the success or not of the American taxpayers' efforts and money and, and kind of tracking our progress in the region? In, in terms of uh, the DRC. The fact that the president yeah. has such aggressive goals yes. with EV trans, uh, transformation, yes. yet the control for the largest lithium mine in the world may have been negotiated to China. I understand that if we have these goals, if we are putting metrics and goals um, and having penalties in the automotive industry, then we in the government should also have metrics and goals that we're following to facilitate the potential penalties that we'd be imposing on American companies. Are you aware uh, and are you tracking any goals? Yes, the interagency is focused very much on uh, critical minerals and identifying and pursuing opportunities to ensure a U.S. investment in that sector. What are those goals? Are they, are they numbers or are, can you share those goals? Wh wh why don't I follow up with you on- I would appreciate uh, okay, that follow-up. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. Another one, is the Wagner Group a threat to Africa? The Wagner Group is a predatory group that exploits existing challenges in Africa. Um, is the Wagner Group a threat to the United States of America and its allies? I do not believe it's a threat to us, but it's a threat to the interests of our partners in Africa. There are a lot of things that we're seeing in Africa that are reminiscent to uh, the Afghanistan and Pakistan issues that we saw 20 years ago. Wagner Group is absolutely a terrorist threat in Africa, and it can absolutely hurt us in the United States of America. That is one of the biggest reasons that Africa is important. Um, I also have a question about Sudan. Um, are you familiar with uh, GSK, a, uh, a security company in Sudan? No, I'm not. Okay, it's a small technology and security company that's based in Sudan. The Tridive uh, General Trading LLC is used for funding um, the operations of Hamidi and the RSF. Uh, Mohammed uh, Idrizi is partner with Ahmed Musa, the Gallo's younger brother, and is in partisanship, uh, a partnership with Wagner. Idrisi moves all the money for Hamidi. Uh, what I've heard, what I've heard is that uh, these are things that happen prior to your, to your stationing in your position but the war in Sudan is currently being funded um, by uh, stealing the resources, uh, the, the natural resources from, uh, from the Sudanese. Uh, are we doing anything to counteract uh, these, uh, these, uh, these forces, the funding of the Wagner Group, uh, and the continued violence in Sudan? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Earlier this month, uh, we imposed sanctions on two sets of parastatals that are um, respectively affiliated with the Sudanese Armed Forces and with the Rapid Support Forces. Uh, GSK. To what effect? Are we noticing any effect at all? Uh, well, it's, it was the action was just taken this month. 
so we, um, we, so I just wanted to mention to you that GSK is a subsidiary of Tradive, which is the one of the RSF affiliated parastatals that we sanctioned. What we, what would be helpful, and I would welcome your voice, is to encourage other governments to join us in our sanctions. Uh, the UK is considering doing so. Uh, the EU has been rather slow in uh, and in making a decision to pursue sanctions, and we're in discussions with our um, Arab partners as Thank well. Thank you for your work here. I appreciate it, and look forward to working with you. The chair now recognizes Rep. Kamlacher Dove for five minutes.